Hi everybody, Dr. D here. Uh, today I want to respond to one of the questions that I get asked most frequently in dealing with the interpretation of the matrix assessment profile because as you know the three major influences that will dictate the integrity of your biological environment are your structure, your biochemistry, and your mindset, the virtual realm, the psychological, the emotional, even the spiritual aspect of your day-to-day -day experience. And in asking um, questions related to this concept, one of them that comes up most frequently well, is, well, what is the difference between the brain and the mind? And is there a difference? Well, in fact, there is, because um, the brain is actually a structure. It's a uh, transformer, if you will. And the mind is basically an experience, a foundation for your experiences. So the feelings, the thoughts, the behaviors, the uh, activities that you imagine you would like to be engaged in, or the life that you wish that you could be living that you're not, but you don't know how and you don't know why. And so subsequently, you are led on a frantic journey through a myriad of healthcare professionals who ultimately end up telling you one of a variety of things. We can't find anything wrong. Um, the symptoms are normal for your age. We're going to have to wait and see. We've got to run more tests. Or the symptoms are all in your head. And to an extent, this is probably true when you consider the fact that the brain is actually taking in information, impressions through the five senses and converting it into a form of experience that becomes part of your personality and becomes part of your character as you continue to age. Now, there are a lot of moving parts to the brain, the physical brain and the nervous system itself. And it's fascinating to go through, and um, it takes up a lot of my time at the gym when I'm not paying attention to working out, but I'm trying to distract myself from the actual physical activity of lifting weights. I'll listen to something about the prefrontal cortex, or the anterior cingulate gyrus, or the amygdala, or any of the other uh, popular parts of the brain that are important, but there are so many of them, and in and of themselves, have very little significance other than the fact that they all have a relationship. So for every action, there's going to be a reaction. And um, contrary to popular belief, it may not be an um, equal and opposite reaction because it impacts all the various areas of influence that comprise the biological environment and they comprise your day-to-day -day experiences. So for instance, take a simple statistic like the average person loses focus. In other words, they quit paying attention to what it is that they're doing on average seven to ten times a minute. That's a lot of lag time in terms of, well, uh, because uh, energy flows where attention goes, if my attention is drifting off seven out of ten times every minute, that's a whole lot of room for you not to be paying attention to what it is that you could be doing or should be doing in order to change what it is that you don't like about your life. Now this is directly linked to another concept, and that concept is within the virtual realm, we have thoughts. And these thoughts originate through the mechanism of the brain converting impressions coming in through the senses into an actual experience. Now, depending on who you consult, um, we're told that on average the, um, uh, in, an individual will have 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Now, here's where part of the problem is is that be, when you combine that with the uh, attention deficit factor and the fact that you're having 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day, but 90% of those 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day are the same ones that you had yesterday. And so if uh, uh, energy flows where attention goes, 
you're not paying attention seven out of ten times every minute, you're having the same 50 to 70,000 thoughts today that you had yesterday, and you're wondering why what you want changed in your life is not changing in the way that you want it to, then we see the core foundation for this dilemma. And so in order to solve this dilemma, one of the best strategies is to alter the input. In other words, change what it is that we're thinking about. Introduce new and different input. Focus on that input. In other words, pay attention to it. And as a consequence, the concept of neuroplasticity becomes a reality, meaning that the brain is fully capable of changing the way you experience things as a result of its ability to alter the neurological pathways associ associated with beliefs and behaviors and attitudes and feelings and thoughts. And then when you factor all of these things in together, ultimately what happens within a 21 to 46 day period of time, if you pay attention to the process, you're going to see that you're having a unique and different experience on a day-to-day -day basis that's more congruent and more consistent with what it is that you really want to experience. So we've got a lot more information to share with you about this. There's a lot more information available on our membership site and there are a whole bunch of new audios and videos that we're in the process of developing dealing specifically with this issue. Until then, I'm Dr. Richard DiCenso, and thank you for listening.